Here we go. Welcome, everyone. Uh, this is Mark Waite, and uh, it's the Jenkins Doc Special Interest Group meeting today. It's the 22nd of May. Glad to have everyone here. Um, let's review the agenda and then work through it. So we'll talk action items, then GitHub projects, milestones and issues. Uh, we've got data on contributors and contributions that I wanted to be sure we work through. And um, Prakar, if you're here and interested, we could do a section on Google Season of Docs and timeline and project ideas. Uh, yeah, I'm interested. Okay, good. Well, then let's put that a little earlier so that we can be sure that you understand the things that are there. Thanks. Good. All right. Oleg, any other topics that you feel that we need to get onto the agenda? No, nothing specific from me right now. Okay. Great. All right. So then let's work through the action items. A doc sig summary. I'll write on that today, submit it for review over the weekend in hopes that we can consider posting it next week as part of the Hackfest um, blog posts that will be coming out. Yeah, it will be good. Uh, Oleg had run the Palm meetup with James Nord. Thanks very much. The presentation has been recorded and is available on YouTube through that, that link. Mm -hmm. And then we had an item, Oleg, uh, list the GitHub apps and plugins that use them. Are you comfortable with that one or? Uh, so it's still standing. I haven't uh, touched it. Okay. Super. All right. Thanks. Okay, then we've switched to using GitHub projects, milestones, and issues. We've got two GitHub projects now. One is the user guide rework. And this is the board that it shows. Mm -hmm. Oleg, anything you wanted to share here on the specifics and how this can help us? Well, uh, firstly, um, it's additional to GitHub issues. So GitHub issues are helpful because they're easily discoverable by users. Uh, they can manage to write in the same repository as pull requests. Uh, and in general, uh, they're much more convenient for users than uh, Jenkins Jira. A project is just a representation, basically a snapshot of the project. Why we benefit from that? Uh, everybody can go to, uh, uh, to this dash, uh, dashboard and see what's planned, what's left, what's in progress, and what needs reviews. So, yeah, that's uh, the main benefit of this dashboard. Thank you. Yeah, and, and in addition mm -hmm. to the user guide rework, we've also got the administrator guide update project. Yeah, right. So, you know, one uh, ask to you, Mark. So mm -hmm. when you create issues and pull requests, uh, please add them to the project because uh, otherwise uh, firstly it would help uh, contributors to understand the way it belongs user guides or admin guides and secondly it would still help us uh, to track the progress you bet and mm -hmm. so so one of the things that i needed to clarify was that mm, the content should in general that we're creating in in github issues here should generally be assigned to one of those two projects it's not it's not. It's rather atypical that we'll get something that's in an issue that's not either a user guide or an admin guide. Is that correct? Um, well, uh, there might be other issues, of course, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, for documentation, uh, almost everything now. So we have user guides, we have documentation guides, we have uh, contributor guides. So this is our semi-official categorization right now, and also developer guides. So four types of guides on uh, the project. So whatever wiki page likely belongs to one of these four categories. Good. Uh, we, okay. don't, we don't have special projects for developer guides right now. Great. Okay. But so that, that, that says that, for instance, when I created this monitor and restart offline slaves from wiki just yesterday, it should be assigned to the 
the admin guide. That way it's tracked as part of that. Exactly. Thanks. Okay. So I can revisit those and be sure that they're assigned to, mm -hmm. to projects. As I've been working through these, uh, making progress on them, they'll, they, each one should go to one of those. Uh, I assume it would be also okay if we cre created additional projects, not just for user guide and admin guide, but for developer guide, if there's yeah. something that is developer centered. Yeah, if we plan uh, to do the migration, it would be nice. Because yeah, right now we have only user guide and administrator guide, for, for example, on Jenkins project roadmap. So having uh, something for uh, for developer guide would be useful. For contributor guidance, we don't need a project because uh, there is already one in Jira, which is mostly complete. Right. So, uh, but yeah, for developer guides, I think it would force uh, having a project. Great. Okay. Thank you. All right. Then in terms of, we also have, we're also using a milestone in GitHub uh, with regard to the public roadmap. Um, Oleg, is there anything here that I need to be aware of or that we as a group need to be aware of in terms of how to use this more effectively? Mm, I think I should convert it to project. Okay, so it's this is this is another this is another another concept. And now that we've enabled projects, we could use we could conceivably do a roadmap project instead of doing a road roadmap milestone. Exactly. So I used a milestone mostly because it was for my personal use. Right. And uh, well, yeah, right now I think it could be just converted uh, to project. So. Great. Thank you. Thanks very much. Okay. So in terms of our progress, uh, we've got, we've, we've run a series of, we ran a 90 day sample of the, of the accesses to the wiki pages. And out of that came a list of 245 pages that had been accessed. Uh, of those 74 have been triaged and either assigned to GitHub issue or listed as no, no action to be taken or we just need a redirect. 171 of them still need to be triaged. So the I'm working through them steadily and others are welcome to. There is actually a spreadsheet that I'm using to do that now. I got tired of fighting with editing tables inside JIRA. And so that sheet is here and I'll embed a link to that into the SIG notes. Okay. So one question to you, we have a training session about that uh, on Tuesday. Uh, do you want to invite contributors uh, to contribute to this triage there? I was, I was assuming that, that an inexperienced contributor may have difficulty helping with the triage. Mm -hmm. I'm open to guidance on it. I was thinking that, okay. that, for instance, deciding where to put something is typically one of those which we, you may need some past experience, but I'm open to suggestions. What, what do you think? Should we invite uh, contributors to assist? It is the page is open for comment, so I could make it so that they could comment to the sheet. Well, we can uh, edit, uh, but we disclaimer that it's advanced topic. Ah, okay, that's that's good. All right. Okay, so I'm currently working on the UI Hugfest uh, projects listing uh, update. So I will just edit uh, there. Great, that would be wonderful. Okay, thank you. Anything else on GitHub and how we're using GitHub to accelerate our documentation work? Okay, the next topic, uh, Prakar, this one I think is for, for your benefit and for others who may be viewing the recording. So the Jenkins project has been accepted as a Google Season of Docs uh, project. And uh, Oleg is one of our org admins. I'm one of the mentors. Uh, this is our, our chance to review the timeline. So right now we are in the technical writer exploration phase. In that phase, 
writers yeah. become familiar with the project and come to understand what the project offers and how they can contribute. Uh, that will end in about two weeks on June 8th. Yeah. Then there's a month that technical writers are allowed to submit their applications proposing the work that they would do during the, during the period of Google Season of Docs. And those applications are described here through this link from the, the Google Season of Docs page. It talks in detail about personal information, your experience, and the crucial thing, the project proposal. Um, so this is what has to be done and submitted to Google by the due date. It should, we've found that it's very good for these things to be reviewed first by project members in draft form. So by Jenkins project members in draft form before they are ever submitted to Google. Oleg, in your, in your experience with Google Summer of Code, are there things that you would guide us on in terms of what makes an effective project proposal and what sorts of things those writing the proposal should do? Well, uh, so Google Season of Docs is slightly different uh, from JSOC, uh, but uh, common expectations are basically the same. So we expect a consistent proposal, uh, which would uh, be explicit in terms of deliverables. So basically items you would like to improve. Um, also, this proposal has to be feasible. So for example, uh, if you say that I'm going to rewrite the uh, Jenkins user documentation completely, it's not feasible proposal. It might be a valiant goal, but it's not possible to do it during uh, Google season of docs. Uh, but for example, focusing on a particular area, like let's say Kubernetes, Docker, or maybe uh, just uh, refining user guidelines or installation guidelines, uh, this would be a scope uh, which is feasible. Um, also, uh, for Google Season of Docs, it's important uh, to take a project which would be valuable to the community, which would be uh, basically available to contributors and to Jenkins users. Yeah, I think that's it. So obviously if you do any contributions to the Jenkins project, of course, uh, it would be much appreciated and usually contributions uh, help uh, potential uh, mentors uh, to refine their proposals and come up with better plan, with uh, uh, better application. And, uh, yeah, what we see historically, uh, the most of uh, uh, contributors we accept to Google Season of Docs uh, do some contributions uh, before the application. It's not mandatory, but uh, uh, in practice, it helps a lot. Okay, thanks. Mm. So, Prakar, were there any specific questions that you had? We have the advantage that. With, with just the three of us here, it's a perfect time. If you've got specific questions you'd like to ask. Uh, like regarding the questions, uh, like I was uh, thinking like when uh, uh, I, I hadn't participated till now in such a competition. So uh, I was like just thinking how to figure out the proposal. Like what, uh, is there any um, draft or format in which uh, the proposal should be formatted or uh, in uh, uh, are there any sort of draft uh, in which I should uh, form a proposal like what are the things that should be mentioned in the proposal uh, mm -hmm. like some questions uh, like why I'm interested in that, that project or is it completely up to me how I format the proposal what all things I must add in it so I briefly listed uh, what would be needed uh, in the previous question. Um, so if you're interested, you can refer to um, guidelines for Google or Summer of Code, which are uh, more documented on the Jenkins side. But yeah, the most critical thing is clear uh, list of deliverables. Uh, so basically explicit uh, list of what you plan to do. Preferably with some planning, preferably with some details, but yeah, this is a key part. Uh, okay, thanks. Yeah, and the, the document here on the Season of Docs site gives you the specifics of what, what they expect will be included 
And then if you're looking for ideas, oh, what, what things might you include in the proposal, the, the Google Season of Docs page on Jenkins.io includes a number of suggestions of possible project ideas. Uh, okay. Great. Um, so that, um, let's see, I'll include the link to that project ideas here later. Actually, let's just do it now. So Jenkins IO, the docs community, season of docs here, and this page gives us more info, including the project ideas. Let me just embed that into our meeting notes. Great, thank you. Did you have other questions, Prakash? Uh, yeah, no, no other questions. Uh. Oh, all right. Okay, so then um, in the past, I've gathered data on contributors and contributions. We've, we've got 86 open GitHub issues now. 29 have been closed. That, that's a steady improvement. Uh, we'll, we expect the number of open issues to increase significantly as we work through the triage process. Uh, and we're very grateful for people who are contributing things to close it. In terms of the graphs, this time from pull request initial submission to engagement from someone who is not the author is looking pretty good. It shows that for the last month or more, uh, time to mean, median time to engagement has stayed at or below four hours. So that, that's really encouraging, particularly given that we have a 24 hour day and, and so we've got people helping regularly. Uh, there's an, a concern here in the time from PR open to merge that we've over the course of the last month shown a steady increase in the time it takes for us to merge something. So, that's one where I've got to do more work on reviewing. We need, we need to expand, I think, the, the reviewer team so that we can get more and encourage those who have recently joined it to submit their reviews. I think we've had a number of folks who joined the, the reviewers but haven't been submitting reviews recently. Yeah, so in my case, I just have no bandwidth because um, uh, your UX hack first and other things so all my time. So I cannot uh, contribute on a regular basis, or basically on daily basis to reviews. But yeah, what I would like to say that uh, even with a recent decrease, we are still uh, in a pretty good range. Good, very yeah. good. Yes, still it would be nice if you dedicate a bit more time. Well, and, and it's one that, that same, same problem for all of us. I think this is one where as we encourage more contributors, we may be able to do it. We had added several people to uh, to invited them to contribute reviews, and I think that's a good way to to get more help there. Yeah, right. I'll but, I'll be working that. Yeah, but uh, if you just think uh, think about people, uh, so whom we edited recently, Sladen. Sladen has a Google Summer of Code uh, project. So yeah, I would say that it, uh, you shouldn't expect. Uh, too much bandwidth from him until uh, end of August. Uh, who else? So, I think we added Vlad. Yeah, Vlad. Uh, Vlad can uh, regularly review pull requests. Ah, oh, good. Uh, okay. So, who else? So, team. Team. Yeah, team is also busy with prep work. Then we have system read permissions rollout, which also requires time, uh, plus Jenkins score. Because the uh, team is doing a huge chunk of work uh, related to Jenkins core maintenance at the moment. So, well, I think uh, that yeah, we should uh, encourage contributors to do more reviews, but at the same time, we are still in a pre within a pretty good range. So, excellent. I wouldn't say that it's immediate concern or a red flag. We still uh, measure the majority of pull requests uh, within two days or so. Uh, yes, and that, that is certainly true, right? We, I mean, mm -hmm. the 85th percentile emerged within four days. So yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, and in terms of 
contributions from the last month. We've merged 120 pull requests. That's a significant increase from previous months. Um, and the number of issues with our switch to GitHub issues has nicely increased. Uh, we do have 22 open pull requests currently. And then that I think concludes the, the, the pieces that I was worried about for this meeting. Oleg, are there other things that you think we need to review here? Yeah, we could quickly touch the topic about uh, automatically compressing images. So ah, I, yes. yeah, I could just show what I'm uh, going to do with that. Yes, hang on. Let's let me stop sharing. And if you want to show us that mm -hmm. automatic Im image compression is an interesting topic. Okay, so just a second. You need to make me a host. Ah, I've got a grant share. They've taken away my share allow everybody to share by default just a minute so advanced sharing so happens everyone can share you should have permission now yeah, you should uh, really migrate to the Jenkins CDF account because today we have uh, everything configured okay do you see my screen do yes okay so yeah so one of the issues we have with Jenkins IO at the moment is that we store images um, in the main repository. Uh, to be honest, I wouldn't call it a good practice for starters uh, because this repository is extremely big at the moment. And uh, by contributing new content with images, we actually make it bigger every time. And uh, well, we have opportunity to change it in principle by moving image to another repository or maybe not even to repository because yeah, you rarely really need to version images as per, well and versioning them in git basically doesn't give you any significant advantage so uh, what uh, you have now that an extremely big repository and for example there is a new pull request uh, um, for adding missing logos uh, missing logos in artwork and basically uh, this is from where uh, my actual work started because this pull request also adds a bunch of new images and uh, they were avoided concerns about uh, you merge another 20 images or so then yeah, these images are not optimized and hence uh, the size increases um, one of the ways to do that is to actually ask contributors to optimize them but uh, it causes firstly an issue for contributors because so they need to figure out how to do it properly with lossless uh, compression. It's not always easy. At the same time, uh, they spend time on that. And uh, as reviewers, we still have no opportunity to say whether they were compressed or not, I, unless we check uh, them out and verify. So good news is that uh, there are tools which uh, allow doing automation uh, around that. And uh, for example, uh, there are uh, GitHub actions and GitHub applications which can modify images right inside submitted pull requests. So how it would work? Uh, yeah, I'll just uh, open my own version of this pull request. Um, so here, if you go, you have yeah, uh, meetup logos plus GitHub actions. Uh, a compression test so basically it's the same pull request but in this repository i also have a bot configured which automatically uh, processed the images in this pull request and uh, compressed them well uh, one thing which was mentioning that it actually compressed all images not only images submitted in this pull request because yeah this is how this bot works mm -hmm. uh, so it doesn't support uh, svg at the moment only png and uh, jpeg well, uh, adding SVG is small amount of programming uh, for maintenance of this board. Uh, but yeah, what was mentioning here that okay, so in the DOM, uh, uh, you can see that uh, compression reduced images by 26% or by 20 megabytes. So in our repository, we have around uh, um, 80 megabytes of images already. And every time you modify them, actually, you just increase. So, for example, if I merge this pull request, it won't re reduce the repository by 20 megabytes. Actually, it will increase uh, it by 16 megabytes, by 15. So, that's uh, the main problem with uh, our architectural decision, uh, with the current uh, website layout and structure. But, uh, yeah, 
So I think we have to live with that for a while. So what is my plan here? That uh, I will uh, create a block list which basically just includes all of previous images. So that uh, we do not uh, archive, we don't compress what is already in the repository. Uh, but for the rest, we enforce such automatic compression. So every time somebody submits a pull request, uh, the image will be automatically compressed, unless it's not already compressed. Uh, obvious downside about that, that uh, after that you will have to pull uh, uh, the branch because uh, this bot commits directly to the development branch. Yeah, uh, this is how all bots work. But I think it would be still uh, uh, convenient uh, to users because, yeah, for example, here uh, we can just uh, squash merge this pull request. And after that, uh, there will be no other head uh, created by uh, uncompressed images. So, so the technique that the bot is using actually is to, it, it optimizes the image and adds a new commit. So it, we must be sure that we squash merge, otherwise we yes. get the unoptimized and the optimized. Okay. Exactly. And is there a way that the bot can, can automatically label it for us to remind us to no. squash merge? There isn't. Yes, so technically uh, I could add another bot which basically checks the commit history and it's, if it sees a message like that, it automatically adds a squash merge label. Um, but yeah, it needs additional automation. Okay. I can do that if needed. No, and uh, yeah, just knowing that knowing that this bot is a possibility. Now, have has there been any consideration of rewriting the history and admitting that we're going to change history and and replace the images in in history or is that a force push is just given the number of forks of this thing terrible to consider i'm happy to consider that assuming that we do architectural change so for ah. example if we move all images to another kind of storage i see uh, well it I'm not sure what would be the storage. It can be a service because yeah, right now we have CDN. So these images are served from CDN anyway. Um, it would be just a separate repository. It uh, might be GitHub FS or whatever. So it's uh, an implementation detail. If we move images outside of this repository, it will, it will be technically feasible uh, to uh, do force push, but yeah, yeah, what force push means is that basically all pull requests which are staged right. uh, they will become a mess. Right. It's and and the the Git community guides against force push. So understood. It sounds like it's not a not a viable thing here. Okay. Good. <laughs> Well, uh, one of the ways to do that is to actually create a new repository uh, to archive the existing one, but again, it will uh, lead to the loss of contribution history, etc. So it's pick your poison. The problem that uh, right now, if any contributor wants to work on this repository, then this contributor needs to check out for around 100 megabytes which doesn't seem to be a tremendous size because yeah, for example, if you want to develop this size, you will likely need to check out uh, a few gigabytes from Docker because our make file is based on Docker. Uh, but yeah, still it's formally a quite big repository. So now Daniel Beck had asked a question about some of the images where he felt like we could dramatic could have dramatically sized them down earlier any guidance there i think his comment was something about hey we're presenting a 700 pixel wide image but it is the source the source image is 10 times that size or something like that yes it's a it's a case it's not something uh, the existing bots can do for you at mm -hmm. least i haven't seen a bot which would automatically resize images I can assume that they exist. For us, uh, there are some uh, well, really bleeding examples, if you wish, just a second. Uh, so for example, at some point we matched uh, a blog post about five superpowers. You may remember that? Yes. 
and if you go here yeah here's here are the images and uh, yeah basically it's a case daniel was referring to because yeah this 69 percent compression is a compression for really high resolution image and we just show an icon which could be just one pixels uh, uh, okay so, and, so yeah right now right now if you open this page you just download uh, yeah quite a number of uh, megabytes just to see a few icons got it okay thank you so so that would be a that is a, that is a viable and separate thing that we that we could do now it would for that particular page it would benefit that page if we optimize the image at the cost of adding a new copy of these the, sh the reduced size images to replace those bloated images that are there yeah okay so yeah, you could do drastic changes uh, but uh, there should be strong justification for now i my suggestion is to just ignore everything here uh, Got it. basically start doing it only for new images because yeah some images yeah, they can easily be filtered out some images cannot be uh, but yeah, it's still a small matter of programming to have everything to be not great all right well thank you Oleg. that that so this will mean that when when a, a contributor after this this pull request after this tooling is available a contributor can submit images not having had to worry about them being optimized images it will optimize the images I assume they should choose an image size that's reasonable. So keep it about the size that, that they need for their page. Exactly. So yeah, how it's implemented right now. So basically I'm using existing Calibre app board uh, and it does lossless compression for all of them. Yeah, if I go after 80 percent yeah probably we could uh, reduce uh, the image sizes uh, twice more but i don't know so uh, i just did lossless okay and mm -hmm. so 80 percent is what's been done by default and 80 percent is uh, default uh, for many tools including g crush and other things mm. Mm -hmm. okay. so yeah my plan is to get it over the line uh, preferably before the hack fest uh, but yeah uh, no strong uh, no commitment excellent thank you i think that covered all the topics that we had today any other topics that need to be discussed? All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll meet again in a month. We've got the Hackfest that starts next week. Uh, there will be a docs presentation on it. The intro is on Monday. The docs presentation is on Tuesday. Uh, looking forward to both. Thanks. <laughs>